This is the Volch 300 Rally, a Chinese motorcycle that you can buy in Europe for around 4,500 euros, making it a very affordable alternative to the Honda CRF 300L, or better yet, the Honda CRF 300 Rally, since this one also has the navigation tower and the deflector shield we the adventurers love so much. The goal of today's video is to analyze and test this bike and try to find out if it really has what it takes to be compared apples to apples to its Japanese cousins. Hello adventurers, my name is Diogo Guerra and this is Off-Road Off Course. Before I begin my review about the Vogue, I want to say that, in general, I'm always very happy to see new brands emerging and growing inside the European market. Sometimes these bikes can be, these brands can be a bit iffy or problematic, but they come with new ideas, no dogmas and usually a great desire to conquer our hearts. With very performant and, you know, very reasonable motorcycles at very good prices. And if nothing else, they force the bigger manufacturers to re-evaluate some of their strategies, which is good, especially in this market that desperately needs a wider selection of modern dual sports and affordable, practical adventure motorcycles. But enough of these complicated market dynamics, let's talk about the motorcycle, the Vogue 300 Rally. This motorcycle right here belongs to my friend Paul Nogueira. Thank you, Paulo. And as far as modification goes, he installed these plastic handguards, also this Krieger uh, pull strap, and also this uh, plastic head pipe protection. And for some reason, he removed the stock metal crash bars. Paulo, I know how you ride. I don't know if this was a great idea, man. This is the European version, which means that the engine is fuel injected and the wheels have spoked rims with 21 inches on the front, 18 inches on the back, and th this makes this bike very similar in terms of dimensions, specifications and promises as the Honda CRF 300 Rally, but for little more than half the price. It feels just too good to be true. The engine is a liquid-cooled 292cc single cylinder, delivering about 28 horsepower and 25 newton meter of torque. The seat height is 91 centimeters, and the wet weight is 159 kilos, full of gas, 11 liters, enough for 340 kilometers. The bike has ABS that can be turned off for the rear wheel, and the suspension for this version are 41 mm thick, non-adjustable, with 240 mm of wheel travel. The shock has a simple preload adjustment and also 240 mm of travel. The display is simple, it shows the usual information, including the RPMs and the selected gear. Unfortunately, this simple display does not show you the engine temperature or the fuel level gauge. It only blinks a light when you reach the fuel reserve, which is a bit inconvenient, but definitely not a deal breaker for me. Now, I am just a simple, unsophisticated off-road rider, so I'm not the best person to judge looks, aesthetics and details, but as far as I can see, this bike is pretty much on point. Everything feels solid, well put together, the materials seem decent and nothing is weird, maybe except this Euro 5 flex and the side stickers that got weared out in only a couple of months. The controls are apparently made specifically for this bike, which is a step up from what I saw on the AJP and the Fantic. The seat seems to be top quality and it's very comfortable, and I give Vogue extra points for fitting this bike with decent sized foot pegs, crash bars and also the rear metal rack. This bike is a Vogue produced by Lonsin, which is a rather big and respected Chinese group. Uh, and the engine they use, uh, I have heard that it's the same on the Kawasaki KLX 300. But I have heard this, I am not sure, and I don't know if it is the same engine or just a copy. And if it is a copy, is it a good copy? Are the tolerances the same? Are the materials the same? I really don't know. I am just a guy with a camera. I don't have access to any inside information, so 
I am just leaving these questions out there. Well, anyway, I don't think I can make any more conclusions just by looking at the bike. I need to test it, so let's take it for a spin and see how it handles city commuting, traveling and off-roading, of course. And how does the Vogue feel commuting around town? It's a zippy motorcycle, love that word. The brakes work well enough. They're not performance brakes, but the bike is light. It does not go that fast. They are more than enough. I kind of feel the ABS has a bit of a delay. Like it does not act immediately, like on most motorcycles. It takes like a fraction of a second before it kicks in. So it lets the, the wheel spin a skin for maybe half a meter or so. Uh, the ergonomics are really good. Like the seat felt uh, maybe the best stock seat I've ever tried on any bike, honestly. I like the broad handlebar. It's tall, standing position, really works well for me as well. Um, the controls are really, everything is on point, like very tactile, good clutch, good, good level. Um, kind of vibrates more than the Honda, but I feel this is a bit of, um, perhaps of an unfair uh, comparison because the Honda does that extremely well. It's a very, very, very smooth motorcycle. The engine has sleeper clutch, very well balanced. So saying that this is not as smooth as the Honda, kind of, this one is a million times smoother than any, uh, you know, uh, enduro motorcycle or anything like that. Uh, oh, and <laughs> climbing sidewalks with this, it's a breeze. It's so good, like it's so plush. The feeling is so plush, the bike just, just does it. <laughs> so makes it really easy to park anywhere. I cannot complain, great bike. About the top speed and cruise speed, I think it's where this bike uh, is definitely worse than the, the CRF 300, because the CRF 300 will keep a steady 100 speed very easily and you find yourself pushing it to 110, 120 um, because it feels comfortable like the engine does not feel like it's suffering too much up almost to the red line the bike feels healthy and this one when you reach 100 it's already kind of telling you dude don't push me any further this is it and you can keep going, but at least to me, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. It vibrates a bit, I'm sensible to that. Yeah, I, I don't know, I, I don't like it, I don't like it. Beyond 100 Ks, it just screams too much. a good job at least up to my helmet I don't feel any wind which is good uh, because this is a bike to be ridden maybe at 90 100 110 maybe I think this is more than enough um, but yeah not a lot of top speed on this Before I hop on this bike, I have to tell you that it feels nimble, it's a lightweight motorcycle, but it's not small at all. I am 1 meter 80, I can flat foot it with both my foot, my feet, but uh, I think shorter riders will probably still feel a bit intimidated because of its height. Uh, in terms of suspension, right out of the gate it feels a bit better than the Honda CRF. Like, especially the shock it feels more dampened so not great not racing suspensions they are non-adjustable but a bit better than the CRF especially if you are a heavier rider this one seems to hold weight a little bit better it feels a bit maybe a bit more top heavy than the CRF 300 L which is the only one I tried. We don't have the, the 300 rallies here in, in Portugal. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so it feels a bit... 
like less balance than the CRF 300L but still as you can see it's very nice on, on technical stuff Ooh. love it oh I, I keep getting lost I don't know where my camera is um, the engine has just enough torque um, to be very fun like it's very easy to power slide there you go I'm doing these single tracks in second gear, sometimes first, third now because it's a bit faster, second jump, land, <laughs> another jump, this is not actually like a jump, it's more like a fall, still, <laughs> handles it like a champion. The clutch is very smooth, it's easy to manage, the bike it's easy to control, predictable, it's cool. Yep, I like this, I like this very much. This is a bike I'm finding very difficult to evaluate. Its price tag, it's unbeatable, no doubt about that. So the out-of-the-box product you get, it's amazing and probably almost just as good as the Honda CRF 300 Rally. Even better in some aspects and a bit worse in others, like the engine. I really prefer the engine on the CRF 300 because it's much smoother, it never vibrates, it almost feels like a scooter at high speeds and this one kind of vibrates above 100 k's per hour. Also, the maintenance intervals on these bikes are very different, which can be used as an indicator of how reliable they might be. I am trying to be an optimist, because I really want brands like Vogue and new models to succeed, but I also don't want to be a complete fool. And truth is that sometimes these emerging manufacturers or brands, they don't stick for long. They get bought by other brands, they lose their patents, they change their names, they, many things can happen, sometimes they even play their own games, and what happens is that customers are left with a reasonable, decent motorcycle, but with no kind of support. No access to uh, repair, to, to replacement parts, catalogs, uh, references, and that just sucks. There are exceptions, of course, and Voja's name already carries some weight. And a lot of people have been telling me that these bikes are here to stay. But personally, I still feel a bit distrustful. It's a great bike today, but perhaps not a great future investment. Time will tell. One thing I'm certain about is that for this price, I'm 100% sure you cannot get a better, more complete, ready-to-ride motorcycle. At least not here in the European market. Well guys, and now I think I'm done. Thank you all for watching, I hope you learned something, and if so, please don't forget to like, to subscribe, to hit the thingy and to share. See you next week and happy rides!